Hello and welcome to another presentation of the core topics in microeconomics. Today we will derive Marshallian and Hicksian demand functions and we will learn the relationship between the two functions by using Shepard's lemma and Roy's identity. The table you see here summarizes the relationship between Marshallian demand and Hicksian demand. This is something that you want to become familiar with as it will help you to navigate between the two different demand functions. The Marshallian demand allows for examining a demand curve under different prices with fixed nominal income. We begin by defining a utility function. In our example, for the purposes of illustration, Michael has the following Cobb-Douglas utility function. Utility is a function of x1 and x2, goods 1 and goods 2, equals x1 to the power of 0.25 and x2 to the power of 0.75. Michael can choose between two goods apples denoted x1 and pears denoted x2, with prices p1 and p2 respectively. Michael wants to spend his entire income, i, on the purchase of goods 1 and 2. x simply means the unit amount of good 1. So x represents an amount. It's important to remember that. So what is our objective? We want to maximize utility from the consumption of goods 1 and 2, subject to our budget constraint. The first thing we do, so we define our Lagrange function, and we've done that here. Our next step is to take the partial derivative of the Lagrange function with respect to x1, x2, and lambda, which we've done right here. We set the derivative is equal to 0, and then we solve for lambda, which we've done on the other page. But before we go into that, I want to just explain a little bit here. There's, this is an important step in the process because it reveals some fundamental information. Equations 1 and 2 represent the marginal utility from an additional unit of goods 1 and 2 respectively. These two equations can be rearranged to give the price ratio equal to the marginal rate of substitution, which has been done for you right here. The marginal rate of substitution, conceptually, is a unit amount of good 1 that an individual will substitute for an additional unit of good 2 while staying on the same indifference curve. Graphically, it is represented by all the points along the indifference curve. The link provided will direct you to a short video reviewing the relationship between marginal rate of substitution and the indifference curve. By deriving the Lagrange with respect to lambda, we are essentially bringing the budget constraint into the system of equations as a necessary condition to be fulfilled. And that's what we've done right here. So we next set the left-hand side of the equations equal to each other and derive x1 in terms of x2 and prices. We move to our next slide. Now we want to substitute x1 into the budget constraint. So remember, this is our budget constraint, and we solve it. So here we've done it. We've extended out our budget constraint. This is x1, so our budget constraint is p1x1 plus p2x2 equals income. So here we have p1 x1 minus p2x2 equals to 0. And then we do a little bit of math. Mm, it's not that big of a deal. You just have to think about it a little bit. But basically, um, you divide the whole equation by p2. And you're going to have p2 over here on the le right left side of the equation. And you'll have 1 third x2 plus x2, which is 4 thirds x2. And then you divide out 4 thirds x2 on both sides of the equation, you'll come up with 3i over 4p2 equals x2. Then we can go back to our, originally I our, our original identity, where x1 equals p2 x2 over 3p1. We can substitute out x2 for this term right here, 3i over 4p2. And then we'll have this right here, this equation right here. And we will solve for x1. Basically, P2 cancels out right here. 3 here and 3 here cancels out. And we're just left with I over 4 P1 equaling X1 right here. This gives us a Marshalling demand for the respective goods in terms of income and prices P1 and P2. So the previous example illustrated a symbolic solution. Typically, the same answer by different students does not look the same. Accordingly, for the sake of comparing results, it is recommended to substitute in real numbers 
for the variables i, p1, and p2 as is follows. p1 equals 1 euro, p2 equals 2 euro, and i, income, equals 10 euro. Therefore, the Marshallian demand in terms of income and prices, when you substitute in these real numbers for these variables, will be x1 equaling 5 over 2, 5 halves, and x2 equaling 15 over 4. Okay, we now derive the indirect utility function from the Marshallian demand for goods 1 and 2 using substitution. The concept of indirect utility assumes that consumers will always behave optimally. That is, they will choose the utility maximizing amount of each good given prices and income. In consequence, utility can be represented as a function of prices and income. So what's happening here? We start with our Cobb-Douglas utility function right here. And substituting in the values for x1 and x2 in terms of income and prices, we arrive at the indirect utility function, which we have right here. And it's just the same thing. It's x1 raised to the power of 0.25. You know, x1 in terms of income and prices raised to the power of 0.25 times x2 in terms of income and prices raised to the power of 0.75. Indirect utility in terms of income, 10, and prices, 1 and 2. Thus, our utility, when we maximize our consumption in terms of income and prices, our utility is equal to 3.39 do not be confused by terminology. The difference between direct and indirect utility is only in the way that it is represented. That is to say in terms of goods x1 and 2 or in terms of prices and income for goods 1 and 2. Hence the numerical outcome of 3.39 is the same for both direct and indirect utility. To be sure of what we've done, in our table we are on the right side of the last row right here, having just arrived at the indirect utility function rather right here, we're on the right side of the last row right here, and we've just arrived at the indirect utility function. And now we will derive Marshallian demand for goods 1 and 2 from the indirect utility function using Roy's identity. Roy's identity is fairly simple. It simply states that the Marshallian demand for good x1 is the derivative of the indirect utility function with respect to the price for good 1 divided by the derivative of the indirect utility function with respect to income, and then multiply by negative 1. Now that's very long, but um, to summarize, it's just this little, little term right here. No big deal. There's a little bit of math involved, and I could go through this problem for you. I've gone through it already more than once, just to make sure it's proper but it would be too confusing for me to do it without showing you each individual step. So go through it. It's the chain rule in here. If you have questions on that, you can Google it. So we're going to take a little break now because we've covered quite a bit. And this video is divided into two parts. So you'll have to go to part two to get the rest of the video. And I will see you there.